Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open here and let's wake up the football gods this morning. Today, we've got Matthew Stafford makes amends for yesterday's, excuse me, the day before yesterday's event. We also have, has Keyson Johnson actually found out the real problem with the Dallas Cowboys? We look at Jerry Jones. We look at the quarterback. Let's look and see what else we can figure out with the Dallas Cowboys. But before I get to all that, we got to check the birthday list. Today is, I believe, the 18th of February. And today, channel member Michael Gibson Today is your birthday. Da 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 da. Happy birthday to you. Da 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 da. Okay, that that one sucks. That that. Okay, scratch that one off the list. We'll never do that. We'll go back to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Michael Gibson. Enjoy the day, and may you have many, 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 many more. All right, so guys. I buried Matthew Stafford yesterday because we all saw this 15 second clip of Matthew Stafford with the NFL reporter ooh, who was taking his picture and fell down. Now that was actually Matthew Stafford's wife right there who is actually looking and checking to see if he's okay, if she's okay. Matthew Stafford, of course, turned around and walked away and said, Ooh, okay. So Matthew Stafford's wife was like, Oh my goodness. Let me check this out. Um, truth in advertising, because I want to try and bring you everything that we know on the outside of that. That looks terrible. Now here's what we're hearing. Cause we, we've seen all the tweets. Um, apparently Matthew Stafford was taking shots of tequila throughout the parade. And so they said he was hammered. He was hammered. Tom Brady actually tweeted to him and said, bro, add some water to that. Seriously, add some water because you're drunk. The good news is Matthew Stafford and his wife will be covering the medical expenses for the photographer who fractured her spine, has a back brace on, and also broke two of her cameras falling off the stage. And you can see that stage is probably... Eight feet, maybe? When, by looking at the height of them versus them, eight, maybe ten foot. So, yeah, um, that's a pretty good fall. If you're not expecting it to hit the ground in that shock. So, shout out to Matthew Stafford and his wife for doing the right thing and giving, because technically they didn't have to pay for her medical bills. But to me, it just would have been better if Matthew Stafford at least – had gone down and said, hey, you okay? Can somebody, uh, let me take my phone out and call 911. You know, I'm Matthew Stafford. Somebody got, you know, people will listen a little more if you say you're Matthew Stafford. I just won the Super Bowl. But be that as it may, I'm glad that they're going to do that. So with our Dallas Cowboys, as we sit here, literally less than a month away from free agency um, starting, as well as, having to get up underneath the cap. We think that we have our coaching situation resolved. We believe that Mike McCarthy is our coach, and we believe that Kellen Moore is still our offensive coordinator. We don't know the dynamic of how that's going to go. Will Mike McCarthy put more influence on it, or will he be just the overseer of Kellen Moore? And people are trying to figure out what is the problem with the Cowboys. You know, Yesterday it was... Dak Prescott's over, uh, is he overrated, you know? And so I think it was Mike Rizzo said, well, Dak Prescott's never won a, you know, hasn't won a road playoff game. And um, Kirk Cousins has. Yeah, but you know what? I believe the record between Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott, I believe Dak Prescott has beat him eight games to one. Seriously. I think it's eight to one Dak over Kirk Cousins. And in that game that he did lose, 
that was a game that Zeke Elliott, I think, only rushed for 40-some yards. And our boneheaded coach decided when Dak was slinging the ball all over the place and we're moving all, all, all the way down and we're in position for the game-winning score, let's go back to running and ran the ball two times and then let's throw a screen to Zeke Elliott. Not exactly the best way to try and win a game. And mind you, our field goal kicker also missed the kick in that game as well. And I believe Amari Cooper was out in that game along with Tyron Smith. Um, had our field goal kicker made that kick, all we would have needed to do was kick a field goal to win the game. But I digress. The question with the Cowboys, and this is the autopsy time for the team, we have to figure out, because you see I'm wearing, I want six. I've had this shirt for too damn long, okay? I, I've worn it in the workshop. I've worn it cooking. And, and I am wearing this as uh, my red badge of honor because I've been taking bullets wearing this shirt. And I will wear this shirt till it li- either we go and win the Super Bowl. I mean, not every day. I'm not wearing it every day, okay, because that's, that's just nasty. But I will continue to use this shirt no matter how much – paint, varnish, stain, epoxy gets on here, how much mustard and all that. I will wear this shirt till the Cowboys win another Super Bowl or it just disappears into the ether. I don't know which is going to come first, but I am working on getting myself physically fit because I will be damned if I will die without the Dallas Cowboys winning another Super Bowl. So since the season ended, it's been my mission to get back in shape. I've lost 12 pounds. My blood pressure has come down because I know I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul, and I'm going to do everything in my breath to try and make sure we get that six ring. Because when I die, (laughs) I don't want to be haunted by the fact that we didn't win another fucking Super Bowl in my lifetime. But I think... Keyshawn Johnson in this piece from yesterday hits the nail on the head, the problem for the Dallas Cowboys. I've actually said it myself, but nobody cares what I said. They don't. But let's listen to it because, you know, the the people or some people are saying the real problem with the Cowboys is Dak Prescott. And the funny thing when you listen to things like this is the way things are shaded. So now the bar is not about winning a playoff game, but you didn't win one on the road. And since Kirk Cousin has one playoff win to his resume, oh, Kirk Cousin, he he was, okay. And, you know, it's just kind of like the thing of, well, Dak Prescott doesn't win against winning teams. Remember when they did that? Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a winning record against winning teams either. And you could actually look and say that Aaron Rodgers actually plays in a patsy division. Yeah, the Bears one year might be pretty good. Yeah, one year, you know, the the Vikings might be pretty good. Yeah, one year, oh no, the Lions, they're never good. They're never good. But pretty much, they're not good teams that Aaron Rodgers is facing. And it shows when it comes to the playoffs because he's not exactly going to Super Bowls either. He's getting a bye in six easy games a season right there in his own division. But I digress. Let's go through. And let's listen to this because I want to go through and point out a couple of things that they say that it's kind of like what Dan Orlovsky said. Can take numbers and skew them any any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and take. Exactly. We will take numbers and statistics and have them fit the narrative. Because statistics, as Philip Ebar will, will heal the test to us, taking statistics, it's not about having correct data as much as manipulating data. But let's listen to him. <laughs> so Mike McCarthy, Dallas Cowboys head coach. Uh-oh. Interim head coach. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. He's not interim head coach. Oh, no, you didn't. Was on the Rich Eisen show on PeacockTV.com, and he talked about the conversations he's had with Jerry Jones. Listen. 
We talked about it. Uh, we, we, we talked about Dan's situation, talked about Sean Payton's narrative also. The conversation was, you know, uh, you and I are in this, you know, back to back and, uh, you know, it's a partnership and, you know, just focus on what we need to do moving forward. He made some personal comments about, you know, how, how he feels about it, but, you know, that, that's really for, for him and I. But yeah, I, I'm very, very comfortable with our relationship and our dialogue. I mean, it's, uh, at the end of the day, we both want the same thing, and it's uh, to win the world championship. Of course, they both always want the same thing, to win a world championship. I think that the the thing that stands out to me that's glaring is the fact that he understands the situation and where things are at. He understands Sean Payton is looming mm-hmm. in, in the Texas area, and he'll be there all season long, whether – he likes it or not. That's the beauty about it. When you know what you're up against, like Mike McCarthy understands. There's a coach on the staff that was a Super Bowl appearing head coach and Dan Quinn who could easily be the interim coach third, fourth week of football season. And then there's another guy who is chilling somewhere waiting to figure out whether or not he wants to coach the Dallas Cowboys next year depending on how deep Mike McCarthy run is toward a championship. And that's a good thing for him. He doesn't have to. You know, it's very uh, difficult at times, Jay, in life in general when you deal with someone that you don't know about. But Mm -hmm. when you know about them and what they are, you can deal with them differently. You can handle it. At least you're aware. And I think he's aware of the situation. No, I mean Mike McCarthy. No, I'm saying Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is saying he's aware of who Jerry Jones is. Oh, aware of Jerry Jones and that Sean Payton has yeah, a yeah, yeah. big ass so, house not too far from the state. One thing key that impressed me about this. <laughs> well, I feel like you've played. And the thing that impressed me about McCarthy here was the fact that he acknowledges the elephant in the room. There yes. are head coaches who would not mention Sean Payton's name. He brought up Sean Payton's name. To the press, he yeah. said he talked about it with Jerry. I was impressed he has some leadership qualities that you don't see in other areas. Jay, you were very critical of Matt Nagy, right? Because he seemed at times mealy mouth, like he didn't want to say certain <laughs> things. That, and and that is not that is not Mike McCarthy. He was straightforward. No, Keith, there, there, no. there comes a point in all of our lives. When you just have to look at the mirror and say, I got to go do it. Got to go. And Mm -hmm. I I think the thing that I liked about the interview was that there was accountability there. Like, we all know what this is. Like, ain't nobody out here stupid. Sean Payton's looming. You know, Super Bowl coach on a sideline. I get all that. But I have all the resources in the world, I have all the talent in the world. There are no excuses. And if I don't get it done, then I'm accountable enough to say it's time to move on. I respect the hell out of that. And that actually gives me insight to, I think, how this team is going to be this year. Now, they've always had high expectations. But I think if the team can take accountability and ownership the way their head coach can, if there's that trickle-down effect key, like once again, like that's what they have to go do and, because that's what it is. And when coaches, when coaches don't pan out with certain things in sports – winning, things of that nature, when you anticipate they should win and we question their coaching and stuff, a lot of the times it's because they are loyal to a fault when it comes to certain things. Uh, If you remember last year, who was Mike, not last, not this past season, but his first season, who was Mike McCarthy's (laughs) defensive coordinator? Mike Nolan. His buddy. Who was Mike McCarthy's boss? When he was in San Francisco, Mike Nolan. So he dug up Mike Nolan out of the ground after a hiatus of, I don't know what it was, 10 years or something like that, to become his defensive coordinator. So that's loyalty to a fault. So they come in, they switch up to Dan Quinn. And the reason I bring this up is how can the Cowboys be better? Well, they can be better because they can run the football. When they ran the football and they gained over 100 yards, they were undefeated. Here you go. But what happened was they stopped doing that. Kellen Moore decided he wants to throw the ball all over the lot because he's an ex-quarterback. Ex-quarterbacks as offensive coordinators, 
they have the tendency to want to do but, that. Well, hold on, Key. But, I, but this is interesting to me, okay? Because I think people look at the Cowboys, they go, they have everything they need. So it must be the coach. So they got rid of the last coach. They bring in a new coach. If this doesn't work out, it must be the coach. They paid the quarterback. But when you say, Key, they have to, you know, he wanted to throw it all over the lot, they have a lot of very good receivers, right? They Doesn't have, mean you got to throw it all over the but, lot, but my, but my point is they also have a great quarterback. If Aaron Rodgers had a ton of great receivers doesn't or someone mean like that. You, doesn't mean it, you got – that's but, part of the problem, Max. But, but wait, Key, you'd want him to throw it. If, 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 he had, if, if Aaron Rodgers had the entire Cowboys receiving core, you'd want him to throw it. Why don't you want Dak to throw it? And the reason be, I bring this that up – That doesn't sound like a dip- – See, here, here's my thing on this is because, you know, everybody always says, oh, well, Dak has to have everything perfect – to succeed. I think it's this offensive set philosophy that you have to have everything clicking to work. This is the case for the Dallas Cowboys offense. It's a run first offense, or that's the way it was designed. And if you become one dimensional and can't run the football, it doesn't work. And it's not just a Dak Prescott thing. It is a Dallas Cowboy thing with this offense. And we try to sling the football around too much, and we can't run the football. Now, maybe, you know, Zeke Elliott, because he's paid so much money, they feel the need they have to run him. But you can look at the stats and the numbers. Tony Pollard is a more effective, younger, quicker, more elusive running back. And we get away from things that work for this team. But let's go on for a little bit more. Because this goes to the manipulation I'm talking about. Discipline mentality, though. That's you, saying, well, because I have all these pieces, you, I have to you, do it. This yeah, exactly. No, you to, did like, you not just hear what I said, Max? When they ran the football and they gained over 100 yards, they were undefeated. Yeah. yeah so what does that say? What it says to that, me is their quarterback isn't as good as their, their, that's their not, running back. That's that not what that, that says. What it says is we have a system in place, and when we get away from that system – we wind up screwing it up. And where I was headed to this is offensive line was shifty. They were in and out of the offensive line. But when you are loyal to a fault, Joe Fieldman, who's the offensive line coach, is not an offensive line coach. He's a football coach. Okay, when he was in Green Bay, he was a pseudo-offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. Went to Miami, got fired, whatever the case is. He winds up back on Dallas staff. Now he's the offensive line coach. Nice guy. But you can't be a nice guy. In coach offense alignment. You got to be a prick. You got to be a real mm. ass to coach offense alignment mm. because you got to be tough like them. That's another problem that they have on top of the Kellen Moore situation. And I understand what you're saying about, oh, if you got this hot shot quarterback, how come they're not throwing it all over the lot? It's not that. It's you pick your spots when to throw. Mm -hmm. You pick your spots. Just because you got a plethora of weapons at the receiver position – and you got a $200 million quarterback, doesn't mean that you got to drop back 45 times to throw the damn football. Sure. Especially if that's, you know, you got to also take what they give sometimes, what the defense is let. You got to. Yeah, gotta don't be, be hard headed. Yeah. But, Keith, the, the reason I bring that up is uh, Mad Dog Russo, Chris Russo, was on first take yesterday and made oh, the case God. that Kirk Cousins Here we go. and Derek Carr, let's leave Derek Carr alone because Derek Carr and Dak, you might argue, are better than Dak. And wait, wait, his wait, wait, main wait. point was to me was he that that Kirk Cousins has won a playoff game. Oh on the road, God, get on out the of road, here! And Dak has not. Um, this is a all real right. Thing. So here's the question: Look, This is a real thank you. Cousins. Anyone here thank think Kirk you. Cousins is better than Dak Prescott? I don't. No. If none of us do, let's leave that alone won a, for a second. He but won a game. game. He won, he won a playoff game, game. Right. But, but look, on the road. <laughs> I, I want to leave that alone because none of us think Kirk Cousins is as good as Dak Prescott. But it does beg the question: Is Dak? Overrated. Let's say he's considered a an elite quarterback. Does response. that overrate him? Where should he be rated? Key is he top ten? Is he top five? You had him at one point top five. You said he's hovering back and forth between that top bucket and the top of the next bucket. Is Dak overrated? No, he's not overrated. Why would he be overrated? How is he overrated? Because they lost this this year in the playoffs. Well, because he's I mean, I, been I six think... years in the league, and it is a good. He hasn't won a playoff well, game. Let me let me ask you a question, though. I love it. He hasn't won one on the road. How many and playoff Peyton games have the Cowboys won in the last twenty six years? Uh, by year six, I think he was pretty good. But uh, did he miss any time with an ankle? 
Did he did you you gotta look at everything in totality, man. You can't just look at it and say, I don't like him. I, I just I, I like this guy better and, and go to screaming and yelling and hollering and saying that Kirk Cousins is better or Dak Prescott is overrated. Dak Prescott is not overrated. Anybody in their right mind knows that. Well, but it but overrated it depends on where just you because rate you it. haven't just you because you well, haven't well, just because you have not won a playoff game on the road doesn't make you overrated, Jay. I, see, Key, I, I feel like what happens with fans is like the, the two gauges of overrated and being underrated are performance compared to expectations and performance compared to contract, right? So when you start looking at Dak being the third highest paid QB in the NFL by his annual salary being $40 million a year and has the second most fully guaranteed money at $95 million, Based upon what we're talking about, about their formula of success being when they run the ball for over 100 yards, they are undefeated, right? That starts to build a case for somebody to say that's being overrated. I, I mean, I think. Well, I'm going to leave that there. But um, actually, no, let me let me. Go this is where I more. say that could be actually. considered overrated. And I'm a Dak Press. I think Dak Prescott is well, very look, good. Here, this will make I think the argument that exactly. Because of the way he was trending, we. I th- and because he's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, because he took over a very good team from Tony Romo, they won 12 games in Romo's last full season. Ah, got your ass. Look at this. See, this is, this is, boom. We can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and take. This is where I call bullshit because you heard what he just said. This is the stuff where where, where weak minded individuals fall into the loop. Because that's bullshit. He took over for a great team that Tony Romo had that was twelve and four his last full year. Yeah, notice how they kind of put those his last full year. The Tony Romo. That was twenty fourteen team. That was with the DeMarco Murray that rushed for over 1,800 yards. It wasn't, again, you know, this whole thing of when they can run the football and they were running over 100 yards a game, they were 12 and 4. But without Romo, without DeMarco Murray, that team was 4 and 12. The team he took over, be it they had some talent, was was 4 and 12 the year before. The difference being is the quarterback. You brought in him, and he went 13-3 and three with the team that he took over from Tony Romo. And this is the bullshit that you get in here. Um, I was going to go into the Peyton Manning reference here because uh, – and I'll, uh, this video is getting too long for this morning. I'm not trying to do an hour-long show. Uh, I'll, I'll come into this later. But if Peyton Manning were the Dallas Cowboys quarterback – Believe me, they would have thrown him over the bus, too. So that's all we got right now. Um, There is some news about Deshaun Watson, and I will be getting to that in a bit. But you know how we roll. Our folks here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And all the thing else I got to say is...